What we're going to be discussing today is adding vectors. We're going to start off with the simplest case of adding parallel vectors. Now the rule here is if the two vectors are in the same direction, we're going to add them. If they're in the opposite direction, we're going to take them away. For instance, we have an example here with a box and we have a 3 newton force acting to the left and a 2.0 newton force acting to the right. Because the two forces are in the opposite direction, the resultant force, uh, should we just call that uh, FR for the resultant force here, is going to be 1 newton. Now this is just the magnitude of the force of course. The true, the best way to represent this is either by stating direction, for example we can say that it's uh, 1 newton to the right, or we could draw in an arrow. Now remember the size of the arrow represents the, um, the size of the force. So should we just pick a different color? Now if um, this was the case we could even draw this over here. So if we were to represent the resultant force it will be as 1 newton to the right. So this over here is the resultant force. Now if the two forces are acting in the same direction, we, what we're going to do is we're going to add them. So in this case the resultant force, we have a pulley system over here with 3 newtons to the right and 2 newtons to the right. So the resultant force is just 5.0 newtons to the right. Once again, we could represent this with, um, with an appropriate arrow uh, going to the right, or we could just write this down as we have in this case. Perfect. Now, let's have a look at a slightly more complicated case in which we are looking at vectors in two dimensions. Right, the next case which we're going to be looking at is adding two perpendicular 2D vectors. Well, we have two vectors over here. One is 7 newtons going upwards and we've got one which is 5 newtons going horizontally to the right. It could be acting on, let's say, a point, could be a sphere, could be, could be anything in this point. Now, what we can ask is what is the resultant force acting on, uh, on this point? Now, in order to add those two vectors, there's a really, really important rule that we must follow. And this is that we can add two perpendicular vectors only if they are arranged tip to tail. In this case, we can see that uh, they're kind of arranged tail to tail. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to move the 7 Newton vector, this one over here, the 7 Newton vector, I'm just going to move that to the right. So in this case, now they're going to be arranged uh, tip to tail. Perfect, so we can see that this vector is now like so. Just to avoid any confusion, I'm just going to remove this vector from this side. So now I have a 7 newton vector and um, a 5 newton vector all arranged tip to tail. Just a little note that I could have equally have moved the 5 newton vector upwards instead rather than move the 7 newton vector horizontally. There's no preferred vector to be to be actually moved and you get the same result whichever vector you actually add. Now moving on to the second step what we need to do is apply Pythagoras's theorem. Our resultant vector will actually be along this diagonal. Let's see if I can draw this maybe in a different color over here. So our resultant vector will be along this line across here. We can find the magnitude of this vector by simply applying Pythagoras' theorem. 
So shall we do that? The uh, let's call this um, FR, which stands for resultant force in this case. Could be resultant velocity, or it could be uh, could be a multiple of other vector quantities. Well, the resultant velocity. Remember, Pythagoras theorem says that the hypotenuse squared, which in this case this blue vector is the, hypot is the hypotenuse, is going to be the sum of the squares of the sides of the triangle. This is going to be 7.0 squared plus 5.0 squared as well. That means that my resultant force will in fact be the square root of 7.0 squared plus 5.0 squared and if we put that number into a scientific calculator we're going to get 8.6 newtons. So this is the magnitude of our resultant force. Now let's have a look at the direction which leads us to step 3. For our final step, what we need to do is find the direction of this vector. The best way to discuss what direction this vector is pointing at is to find out one of the angles. Typically you tend to find the angle with respect to the horizontal, however you could potentially also define depending on the, your coordinate system or um, or the conventions which you're using uh, by the angle to the vertical as well. But for this example I'm just going to be using this angle here which I'm going to call theta. Well, in order to find this angle let's use a trigonometric function. You can use multiples of trigonometric functions. Probably the simplest way to go about it is using the tangent function. So we can say that tan theta, remember our so Katoa, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Now this means that tan theta will actually be just 7 over 5.0 newtons and in order to find theta we need to take the inverse tan so we need to select this function inverse tan uh, which is written as tan to a power of minus 1 on your calculators but really is inverse tan of 7.0 divided by 5.0 and if we put that into a scientific calculator we're going to get 54 degrees and there we have it we have the magnitude of the force so this FR is actually equal to 8.6 newtons and we have the direction of this vector which is 54 degrees. If there are any questions as always please feel free to leave a comment and please also consider subscribing. Thank you.